we want to thank God for each and every one of you who is here, including those who are in the tent, outside there, may the Lord bless you, and may he reign in our lives this morning, born as if you I want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop and our mom in absentia. They are fine, and they send their greetings to us all. They traveled briefly, and they'll soon be coming back, and we thank God for them. I want to thank God for them giving us this chance that we can come and just share in the word of the Lord together. My name is Millicent Kaunda. I am born again, and I bless God. Hallelujah. Buenas if you will. Just turn to your neighbor and smile. Amen, amen. I'm um, blessed this, this morning. In as much as it's very, very cold, I'm so blessed. We've been wandering in my house. You know where I come from? It's hot. And it has never gotten to these temperatures. So we've been wondering what Kinangop is doing in Nairobi. <laughs> Yeah, it came for a visit and it has refused to go. But we are trying, we are trying to cope with everything and we bless God because he is still God and our hearts are warm inside because Jesus is inside our hearts. And when he's inside our hearts, it cannot afford to be cold. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to go straight to the word of God. And what we want to handle today is God's resting place. God's resting place. I acknowledge the fact that uh, God has given us an opportunity again in the month of July, that we are the remnants, that we have an opportunity of getting into the place of prayer through prayer and fasting. And we began on Thursday. And so if you're here or if you're watching us online and you've not yet plugged in, we want to encourage you to plug in because your life will never be the same again. There are some spiritual dimensions that you cannot access unless you learn to pray and to fast. You will still be a Christian, fine. You will still be born again, fine. But there are certain areas, certain realms in the spirit that you may not be able to access unless you learn to tarry in the presence of God through prayer and through fasting. And in this season of mounting up, the year of us mounting up as we wait on the Lord, my prayer is that none of us will be left behind. And so for us to be able to access those realms, I want to encourage us, those who are not yet in, please plug in. Let me tell you something, you can never die. And even if you died, like uh, one time Pastor Beatrice said, even if you died, you'd go to heaven. And that's where all of us are heading. Buenas if you were. Amen. But I'm, I'm yet to hear someone who died simply because, simply because they prayed and they fasted. We want to look at God's resting place. God has always desired to have fellowship with humanity. Humanity, sorry. He has always desired to have fellowship with humanity. Actually, that's the reason he created Adam in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible says that every evening in the cool of the day, he would always appear in the Garden of Eden so that he could go and have fellowship with Adam. And that desire in God has never ever uh, been removed. He still desires to date that he may have fellowship, that he may have communion with you. He desires to find you at very many, actually 24 7 if possible, that you just be waiting on him so that he can reveal to you certain tru truths so that he can be able to fellowship with you. However, in as much as he desires to fellowship with us, he can never force himself into our lives. He is a gentleman. And so he doesn't, he can't even force you. He will keep on desiring, but he has given us a free will. He has given us our own free will, a free will of us also coming to a point where we will desire to have fellowship with him. And I want us to read the uh, scriptures in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 40. And we will go on up to chapter 7, 
verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, now my God, maybe we can just look at, um, before we read it, it can stay on. This is a story of the time when Solomon, King Solomon had already constructed a huge temple for the Lord in Jerusalem. And after constructing, the Bible talks of it in the book of Second Chronicles chapter 5 from verse 11. When they were now bringing the artifacts of the temple, they were bringing them and positioning them in the various places in the house of God. And they came, all the priests, all the Levites, the worshippers, they were coming and they placed everything in its right place in the temple of the Lord. And after placing everything in the right place, the Bible says that King Solomon began to pray. And he prayed and his prayer was dedicating the temple to the Lord. Just like the prayer we did when this, uh, this cathedral was just about to be opened, there was an evening, I remember we came, and this place was being dedicated. And so King Solomon got to a point where he prayed and he prays all the way from second chronicles chapter one up to this point that we are just about to read and this is what the bible says king solomon said now my god i pray let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place 41 verse 41 Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, arise, and I want us to mark, this will be our key scripture. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, to your resting place. You and the ark of your strength, let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. He is in prayer, but he gets to verse 41 and he is telling God, Now, therefore, O Lord, arise, O God, into your resting place. In other words, what he is saying, I know God you dwell in the high places. I know you dwell in the heavens but I have already made a place for you right here where we are. A place where the atmosphere is conducive for you to come and dwell. A place where it is not so different from the place where you dwell. And he's telling him now therefore, O oh Lord, arise and come to your resting place. Bona Yesu then verse 42. Oh Lord God, do not turn away the face of your uh, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant, David. You go to chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. When Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. When all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord on the temple, they bowed their faces to the ground on the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. I'd like, uh, uh, if I'd be given verse 2 in the message translation. Verse 2, chapter 7, verse 2 in the message translation. Mm -hmm. The glory was so dense that the priests couldn't get in. God so filled the temple that there was no room for the priests. Bona Sifiwi. Tell your neighbor, no room for the priests. Hallelujah. So like I was saying, Solomon has finished the construction of the temple. And he is coming in verse 41 of chapter 6. And he is telling God, now arise, O God. Arise from where? From your dwelling place. Arise, O God. Arise from where? From the place where you're normally comfortable as you dwell. Arise from that place and come to your resting place. As in this is what I have done, my father. I have already made an environment that is conducive for you to come and dwell. I have already made an environment that is conducive conducive for you to come and rest right here in the midst of your people. Now God is not looking for an elaborate building that has been made with human hands. I want to believe in as much as 
King Solomon was in prayer and he was telling the Lord to arise and come to his resting place. It did not really mean the temple that he had constructed, but it was the atmosphere that was around that temple that he had constructed. Buona Sefiri. So God is not looking for temples that are constructed with human hands. If he was looking for temples, then those cathedrals in the UK that have been turned into museums would not be museums today. But God is looking for an environment that is conducive for him to dwell in. God is looking for a habitation, not a visitation. Many times we are so excited and we say the Lord visited us. There was a visitation of the Lord, but I want to bring it to us tonight or to this morning that the Lord is not looking for a place to visit. He is looking for a place to inhabit. A place where he can call his dwelling place. He is looking for a person who will be willing to work in his heart in such a manner that his heart will become a dwelling place for the king of kings. And in this season, as we get into the time of prayer and fasting, my desire and my prayer, both for myself and for you, will be that you will ask the Lord to help you work in your heart in such a way that it will be an environment that will be conducive to become a habitation for the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Now, God cannot live in a place or a house that is full of, of chaos. I'd like us to read Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one I will look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. He is asking in verse 1, where is that house that you have built for me? Where is my resting place? In other words, back and forth, including today, just like it was in the days of old, the Lord is still looking for a place where he can come and find a board, a place where he will come and dwell, not visit for a season, but it will be said of him that he has made your heart his dwelling place. Buona sefiwe. And like I said, God cannot live in a place or a house that is full of chaos. I don't know whether you've ever visited a family and as you got to the place, everything was everywhere in the sitting room. Umekutana na socks kwa mlango. Wanaesu asifiwe. Ukakutana vikombe ziko kila mahali. Suruari za watoto na manapkins na mapampa zile zimetumika ziko kwa kiti. Would you sit comfortably in that house? In as much as the lady of the house will come and try apologizing that, you know, we just woke up, we were trying to tidy up. You will be very, very careful where you sit because you don't know what you'll sit on. And the Lord cannot dwell just like we can't feel comfortable in such an environment. The Lord cannot dwell in a place that is full of chaos. What do we call chaos? There are certain things that at times flood our hearts, causing God not to want to dwell in our lives. We may come to church Sunday in, Sunday out. We may be meeting on the streets and we are saying, Buona asifiwe, all we can. We may be looking so okay and so smiley, but God is looking at the depth of our hearts and he is seeing certain things that will cause him not to find a resting place in our hearts. He is asking, where is my resting place? Where is my resting place? King Solomon was very confident when he is telling God, now therefore arise, O my Lord, and come to your resting place. 
I don't know how many of us would be comfortable to tell God, God now, arise from your throne in heaven and come right inside of me. It, because it is clean enough to be called your resting place. A prayer is, even by the time we'll be finishing the 21 days, we will have made a resting place for the Lord. Hallelujah. We will have made a resting place for the Lord. And something amazes me about the scriptures we've just read. In chapter 7, verse 1, if we can put it up again, the Bible says that after Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed, consumed what? The burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And then after the fire had consumed everything, then the glory of the Lord filled the temple. In other words, fire precedes the glory of God. Fire precedes the glory of God. There are things that the Lord is asking us this morning to cast on the altar, just like King Solomon had laid the sacrifices, the burnt offerings that they had laid on the altar, that the fire came and raised down. The fire wants to come in our midst, even as we've been praying and doing the 24-hour network, as we started praying and fasting, going for the 21 days, there is the fire of the Holy Spirit that wants to come. And as it comes, it's like it was looking, when you read that scripture carefully, the fire comes and it begins looking for what it can consume. It begins moving back and forth, looking for that thing that can be consumed, so that after it has consumed it, then the glory of the Lord will come down. Born as if he will. Sacrifices on the altar. And at times we may be able to say that yes, I sacrificed 10,000. Didn't I give my tithe? I sacrificed 1,000. That was my offering. But today I am not talking about that kind of sacrifice. Today what I'm saying is it is time for us to lay down our golden crowns. Born as if he will. The titles that we hold so dearly. That because of the place where I work, I am called a CEO. So when I walk into the house of God, I stand like a CEO. I worship like a CEO. My brother, my sister, it is time to cast down that golden crown in the presence of the Lord that he may increase you further. Bona si fiwe. The praises that we've ever received, that because I led worship so well and I got a, pack, a pat on my back, I start feeling like I am walking on another cloud. It is time to lay all that praise down to the altar. We normally sing the song, Casting Crowns. Casting Crowns. This morning, the Lord would have us cast the real crowns on his altar. So that as the fire of the Holy Spirit will be moving back and forth on this altar that is called DCIK, it will find something to consume so that the glory of the Lord may come in our midst. And it's not only the titles that we call crowns. There are other crowns that we have held so dearly we keep walking back and forth with them day in day out we have made them ours we have possessed them the crowns that we call unforgiveness so and so did one two three to me and so i can never forgive them i will walk into the church fine i will come and lift my hands in worship but when i see them i feel something moving right inside my my tummy we, to, this morning, we have to cast all unforgiveness on the altar. That it may be consumed of the Lord. This morning, we will have to cast down bitternesses. This morning, we will cast down disappointments. This morning, we will cast down all the heartaches that we've ever gone through. 
so that the Lord may come and find a resting place. The sin that has been so prevalent in our lives, we struggle with it, but we don't want to call it sin. We call it an issue. The Lord is looking for a resting place and is asking, who will build me a resting place? In this congregation this morning, in the tent, out there, up the balcony, who will build me a resting place? Who will build me a resting place? For that resting place to be built, fire must come and raise down everything. And you know when fire comes down, there's normally an evidence. You will find ashes. Wanasifiwe. You'll find ashes. All that will be left of my title will be ash. All that will be left of my bitterness will be ash. God is asking, where is my resting place? We cannot continue approaching God with things that are still taking his place in our lives. We may not know, our bishop may not know, the pastors may not know, but you know those things that you have carried as crowns in your life. You know them. And it was immediately after the fire came when the fire came after consuming everything that the glory of the Lord came. The Bible says that when the glory came, there was no room for anyone to show off anything. Not even the priests had room. There was no room for anyone because God had taken charge God had taken every room that was available. How I pray that this morning, God will take every room in your heart that is available. That you'll have no space for yourself. You'll have no space for all those things that have been filling our hearts. I'll have no space for those things in my heart. Because the Lord will have taken charge. When the glory comes... It comes with the honor of the glory. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. When he appears, he appears in his glory. The Bible talks of it in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, when Isaiah, the Bible says that uh, when King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. And he tries just in a bit to describe what he saw of the Lord. Why? Because the temple was filled with the glory. When the glory comes, the glory comes with the honor. And when the glory comes, when you interact with the glory, you can never remain the same again. You may not even need to tell us that the glory of the Lord has visited your family. You may not even need to tell us that the glory of God has come to you. We will look at you and see that you have brushed shoulders with the glory of the King of Kings. Because it will be evident. When a woman is married, they become intimate with her husband. They don't need to tell you they are pregnant. You will see it. Their, their appetites begin changing. <laughs> their clothes become small. Because there's something that happened in their place of intimacy. When the glory of God visits you in that place of intimacy, as you be continuing in prayer, in that very place of intimacy, you may not need to tell your friends what has happened, but we will begin seeing your appetites have changed. 
It will no longer be the things of the world that tickle you anymore. But your appetite will be for the things of God. Your appetite will be for the things that glorify the Father. We will begin seeing you enlarging and expanding in various realms of the Spirit. Because the glory of the Lord has visited you. And it is not just His glory alone. But it has come with the honor. They have made your heart a resting place. They have made your heart a resting place. I want us to read Psalms chapter 132, verse 12 to 17. The Bible says, If your sons keep my covenant and my testimony, which I shall teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. Before you go, let's go back to 13. For the Lord has done what? Has chosen Zion. And he has desired it for his dwelling place. In that place of Zion, please put your name as we read it. For the Lord has chosen Millicent, and he has desired her for his dwelling place. The Lord this morning is desiring you to become his dwelling place. Verse 14. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. When the Lord chooses you as his dwelling place, there are a few things that happen in your life. He decides to abundantly bless your provision. The things that you've been trusting God for in your life, that you have been praying over and over the years, when the Lord chooses your, your heart as a resting place, chooses you as a dwelling place, then the Bible says that he abundantly blesses your provision, meaning you can never be in luck when you become the dwelling place of the Lord. And then it says, I will satisfy her poor with bread. Those things that have been looking or areas in your life that have been looking like there is poverty. It is poverty stricken. There is lack. The Bible says that when you become his resting place, then he will satisfy those poor areas of your life with bread. Verse 16. I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall shout out shall shout aloud for joy. There I will, I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamb for my anointed. The benefits of making yourself a habitation for the Lord. The benefits of making yourself a habitation for the Lord. He will make provision for you in the land of the living. He will satisfy you with bread. And when we talk about bread, it means all sorts of provision that you ever need in your life. Is it promotion you need? He will come through for you because you have made him happy. You have made sure that you provided your life as a place where he can come and dwell. Bonus if you will. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 24 that the earth and its fullness thereof is the Lord's. And so if it is the Lord's and I have made myself a habitation for the Lord, I cannot be a habitation for the Lord and still be in luck. Yet the earth and its fullness belongs to him. Hallelujah. And so even as I almost come to a conclusion, in this season of prayer and fasting, the 21 days. My prayer, my heart's desire is that you will not fast simply because it's in the calendar of the church. If you're fasting because it's in the calendar of the church, then you better stop. 
My desire is that you'll take this opportunity, count it a privilege, count it an honor, and tell yourself that in this very season, for the next 21 days, I will make my heart a habitation for the Lord. I am going to build and construct a resting place for the King of Kings, and I'm going to remove everything that will make the Lord not be comfortable in my heart. I will lay it down on the altar as I await the fire of the Holy Spirit to come consuming and raising it so that my heart can be a resting place for the King of Kings. And by the way, as you fast, fasting is not just abstinence from food, but it is one, abstinence from food, and two, seeking the Lord. The two have to be combined. It's abstinence from food plus the seeking of the Lord. If you are doing the first one only abstaining from food and you're not getting time to pray, you're on hunger strike. You better go and eat. Hallelujah. But if you are fasting because you want to seek the face of the Lord, then you're going to tell yourself in this season, I'm not doing it because we normally do it in January and, Feb uh, and, and July. But I'm going to do it because, Lord, I have desired to make a habitation for you. I have desired to become a resting place for you. I have desired to operate in other spiritual realms that I've always just read in the book of Acts. I have desired that in my life. I have desired that you will transform me, my father, and make me a vessel that you can honorably use. For that reason, I will be in prayer and in fasting. Because there are benefits. When you make the Lord your resting place, in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 14, you will acquire God's power. The Bible says in Luke 4 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the, of the spirit to Galilee and news of him went through all the surrounding regions. This was after Jesus got into the wilderness and he prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says when he returned from his place of prayer, he did not just return the way he had left, but the Bible says that he returned when he was full of the power of God. He was ready to minister. Oh, how I pray that after the 21st of this month, we will return in the power of the Spirit. How I pray that after the 21 days, when we will return to our various places, things will be looking different because God will have influenced them. And it's worth noting that things don't just happen. You have to make them happen by praying. Number two, even as we make God a resting place, is that we'll be able to hear him in clarity when he speaks, you will know for sure that is the voice of the Spirit of God because he dwells in you. He has made your heart a resting place. So you will hear him in clarity. You will see him in clarity. They sing, marudurudu. <laughs> and I'm thinking Marudurudu must be missed. I don't know. It's missed. Giza, giza. <laughs> giza, giza. When the Lord inhabits you and you make a dwelling place for him, then you'll be able to see him move in your life in clarity. You'll be able to see him move in your family in clarity. Is it your children that have been giving you trouble? You'll be able to see God moving in their lives in clarity. Number three, as the Lord makes your heart a habitation, he will give you boldness to live for God. Boldness to be a witness, boldness to proclaim your faith according to Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Boldness it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. 
There are places we normally go into and you're so afraid to be identified as a Christian. But when the Lord makes your heart a habitation, there is no shame. There is no fear. And finally, when the Lord makes your heart a resting place, he will become your provision. He will become your wisdom. He will become fire in your life. He will become Abba in your life. He will reveal himself like the names by which he is called. We call him Jehovah Rapha. We call him Jehovah Jireh. We call him Jehovah Shalom. He will reveal himself by those names that he is called by. And so, even as we wind up this morning, the issue is, are we willing to lay down the burdens? Are we willing to lay down our crowns as we rise up on our feet this morning? And even as you're watching from home, are you willing to lay down the crown? Come and lay down the burden you have carried. For in this sanctuary, God is here. You can tell him in this sanctuary of your heart. Come and lay down the burden you have carried for in this sanctuary God is he come and lay down come and lay down every crown the burden you have carried for in to make a prayer this morning oh yes as you lay all those burdens all those crowns crowns that we've ever won all the praises just lay them down on this altar where we are today lay them down lay them down that the Lord may send the fire of the Holy Spirit to come and consume them lay them down that the glory of God may fill your heart lay them down that you may make a habitation for the King of Kings that you may make a resting place for the Lord of Lords for he desires you just like he desired Zion he desires you as an individual he desires to come and dwell in your life in the name of Jesus oh king of kings we just want to lay down any praise that we've ever won oh God any crown that we've ever won and any praise that we've ever been given we lay them down on this altar today that only you will remain crowned as king in our lives oh God we want to lay everything down we want to lay everything down. Jesus will lay every crown. Oh God, the bitternesses the for and forgivenesses that have become like strongholds in our lives today, we lay them down. We lay them down, Jesus. We lay them down today. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're here and you know what your heart has been like. Yes, you're born again. We are not doubting that. But there's so much that has been hindering God from making your heart a resting place. And if you could just lift your hands, we will pray together in the name of the Lord. Oh, Reba Shakataya Lalaboom. Father, you can see all those hands that have been lifted up. Oh, God. Father, we want to commit them to you today. And we pray, King of glory, that those things that have been hindering them, our Father, from receiving, oh, God, you, and from co co causing their hearts, oh, God, to be a resting place for you. Father, we want to lay them at the foot of the cross this day, that we may walk, Jehovah God, in freedom, that we may make you a habitat in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to lay down all the pains. We want to lay down the disappointments. We want to lay down, Jehovah God, the crowns of our successes. We want to lay them down, O King of glory, and pray that, Jehovah God, fire will come and consume everything, that, Lord, we may become a habitation for you. We may become a resting place for you, God, in this season, Lord, as we continue in prayer, may you continue cleansing us, our God, and causing us to be a people, my Father, causing us to be altars, my God, where you will find joy in dwelling in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. Won't you receive every praise, God, and won't you receive every honor, because we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen.